uh, as you mentioned, I'm a founder of PDC student. On Twitter, I'm at Tom Hensley, and I also blog the Not in Class 3 Leagues, but normally I blog at classroomtables.com on there. Now, I'm just saying, I talked talk about power over inches, and it's a bit of a strange thing to talk about at Teach Meet, where everything's normally all high tech, anything like that. But I was talking to some tutors at UEA and some people, my patient tutors and things like that, and they were saying actually that they think that people have stopped using just simple resources, like an image, when we've got all the text whiteboards, we've got all the IT, we've got everything like that, uh, and we've stopped relying on what's been on front of us and using as teachers for years. So I've had a, I've had a journey, so to speak, uh, of uh, experiences. <laughs> I had a journey of, uh, this year which has really shown me the power of using images in the classroom. Uh, which kind of starts with this. Now, when I went to UEA, uh, started with this in September, I went across in the first week to an art session and I was dreading it. And I was, and I'm still pretty if I am, terrified of art. I hate it, I think I can't do it, I, yeah, I, I have a real fear of art. So when I walked into the art room and sat down at what it's, it's, it's like in the second school again, at my second school art room, I was quite scared. <laughs> and uh, so that's a bit of fact about me and images. Luckily this year, my fear of art has kind of decreased slightly, so I don't cry and away from it as much now. But having a fear of art, I understand that the perfect thing to do, obviously, would be to sign myself up to go to the National Gallery for a week and uh, work with some artists, and obviously that's the natural thing to do when you've got a like, of art. So, me being me, I said, OK, let's go and sign up to spend a week at the National Gallery in, my, in Christmas holidays. Now, unfortunately, only four of us went from UVA. There's maybe 13 of us, but because it's just Christmas holidays, people didn't seem too willing to give that up. So, there's four of us, and we spent a week at the National Gallery talking to them about using images and artwork in a cross curricular way. Uh, some of you may know of the National Gallery's Take on Picture scheme. Uh, it's basically stemmed from that. Uh, this is called a cultural placement they do for PDC students. Stems from that, it's all about uh, the different ways of using art and pictures in a cross curricular way. Now, I had a really tiny but great week at National Gallery. It was really good fun. We got to speak to some experts, obviously, in art education and had a really fantastic week. And that week, I look back at my teaching career, so far, my PDC, that's the week that's really changed who I am as a teacher in the short run. So, a bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but destined to have confused on them, not we, So that's what really saw the light, and I really realised actually, art isn't quite as bad as it seems. Yes, I still don't like doing art, but there's no reason why we can't explore the power of art in different ways. So if you fast forward a bit to when I was in my uh, placement, my first block placement, I was just making four feel the season ago, but when I was in my first block placement at Colby School, uh, one of the outcomes of this week at National Gallery was to spend and produce a scheme of work around this picture, which is the Passion and Treasures, which currently resides in Norwich Castle. Um, my task was to create a scheme of work that's cross curricular and cover as many bases as I can and have lecture and have lots of fun with it as well. So, the children, for two weeks, I was past the I did the Passion and Treasures for about 16 hours each week. By the end of the two weeks, me and I think the children did not want to see that painting again, ever. <laughs> it was like, no, no, don't show me. But it was a really great experience. We had some really fantastic quality work produced by the children. Uh, one of the things we did is we had a gallery evening where we turned our school hall into an art gallery. Because we had the children producing all this fantastic work, but unfortunately the, the Norwich Castle wanted to take all of it off us to put in an exhibition that's going to be up in October. So the children did all this wonderful work for two weeks, and all they were up to is could not be seen by the parents because it was going to disappear off into October. So we decided to actually put on our own art exhibitions. So some wonderful work, some poetry. I got the children over half term with our mean teachers to do some research projects. I had a year three doing things like this and some fantastic work on there. We had newspaper reporting, poetry and art. We had a girl write a newspaper report which the teachers leveled at level four when she was in year three, uh, which wasn't too bad, we didn't think. And I say we've got some really good artwork going on for poetry and all that sort of things. So I'm going to take one picture. Now, the children love to take a picture, and it really kind of provoked me uh, to, to, um, to, to the benefits of using pictures in a cross curricular way. More so, probably to cross curricular work as general, but uh, obviously the power of the image of that as well. The children were automatically engaged and infused, they wanted to explore the picture, and had such a great knowledge and great desire for the art. We took the children to the Norwich Castle for a day. And we didn't go to the castle, we spent the whole day in my art gallery, and I had no children complaining that we were just looking at pictures and pictures and pictures because of, they got so into the passion treasure. And 
things. <laughs> anyway, okay. So, okay. Yeah, okay, so after that, after doing that, uh, that, that uh, cross curriculum unit, I was really aware of the power of using images in other areas of the curriculum. So I started starting my science le lessons with images. That was great discussion amongst the children. So I've got images obviously of blood or muscles of the galaxy. And the children are just all engaged in trying to work out what on earth this strange image is, knowing it's something they see around them all the time. So I've used it in science. We used images to start off an English topic. We're looking at Greek myths and legends, so I thought, why don't we get a picture of Pandora's box, which we're actually looking at. Looking at. We spent two, week, two days exploring Pandora's box through the picture, uh, which linked quite closely into the story. And I ended up working with two days of the picture, a children's picture which retold the story of Pandora's box, because that would be the only story to start off with. Is that actually really <laughs> We could do your, your history by looking at pictures. Oh, sorry. 